Hey everyone, this is Nick, and not everyone can afford a monthly payment for a cloud storage solution, or not everyone is willing to have their precious data hosted on a server that they don't control. The obvious solution is to have your own home server, but again, not everyone has the time needed to maintain that and set that up, or the technical know-how to configure everything themselves. And if that's your case, then what you need is a NAS. The small home servers are insanely easy to set up and configure, even with very minimal technical knowledge. And they can do everything a home server can do, from file storage, backup, photo storage, productivity, hosting websites, and more. So let's take a look at why you need a NAS at home. Okay, but what exactly is a NAS, apart from a wrapper? NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. But basically what it is, is a computer in a small enclosure whose space is taken mainly by plenty of hard drives, so you have all the storage space that you want. They run specific operating systems designed to make them as easy to use as possible, with package libraries to add features and easy to understand graphical user interfaces to let you configure things even if you don't know anything about servers. Think of it as a regular home server, but without all the hassle of configuring it yourself, installing all the utilities that you need, opening the ports, it all takes care of that for you. So in this video, I'll use a Synology NAS because they were kind enough to provide me with their DS1522 Plus and a bunch of drives to slot in in order to make this video. Synology is one of the biggest NAS manufacturers and they run their own NAS operating system called Disk Station Manager. It uses Linux, but the OS that runs on top of it isn't open source. It has plenty of one-click installable packages to extend the functionality beyond just file storage, and some of these packages are open source. Of course, if what you want is more of a do-it-yourself approach, you could grab any old computer, attach drives to it, and install another NAS operating system, like TrueNAS or FreeNAS. But you'll need to ensure hardware compatibility their interfaces are arguably not as simple to use as Synology's and the package library might not be as complete. Still, of course, everything that I show here will be doable on another NAS than Synology's, using a different package name or different package manager and a different interface. The goal here is to show you what you can do with a NAS and why you should probably have one. So let's see how you actually set up one of these things. First, you need to slot your drives in. So here are a bunch of 4TB drives that I will insert one by one into the NAS. Pretty easy, you just remove the drive bay, you slot the drive in there, and you screw it in so it doesn't move, and you just pop that back in. Once that's done, you plug your NAS, and then you connect it to your router or internet provider box, and you boot it up. To access the interface here, Synology just has a simple URL, but other NAS will also be accessible in the same fashion through a web browser. You go through a first run setup to install the OS on the device and let it reboot. And then you'll need to create a storage pool that actually makes use of these drives. That's where the NAS OS will really make a difference compared to running your own server. You'll be able to create a red array graphically, for example. So the data is replicated onto multiple drives and one drive failing won't take down all your files. This is something that requires a bit more technical knowledge to set up on a regular Linux server, for example. And basically, once that's done, if all you need is file storage, then you got it. Here on my Fedora laptop, I can just open the file manager and I'll automatically see my NAS available. Clicking on it asks me to enter the password I set up during the first run install of the OS, and then I'm good to go. I can create a shared folder and I can transfer files to it manually, copy paste anything, it's just there as additional storage that I can use whenever I want. I also have access to the OS interface, which basically is a grid of icons straight from my web browser on my local network. Here it includes a nice set of utilities for managing resource usage, file storage, search, log, settings, but also the package center, which will let me install whatever other application I need to extend the feature set of my NAS. Because, of course, file storage might not be the only thing that you actually want to do on that small home server. For example, what if I want to share that file storage with others or access it from outside of my home, from a regular internet connection and not the local network? Well, I can quickly enable my NAS to be accessible from outside my local network. Here in the OS, I'll just go to external access and create a domain name in a few clicks using Synology as the provider. 
but I could have picked from a selection of others. I can also get a certificate so the connection uses HTTPS and is more secure. It's not absolutely foolproof and you might need to find a tutorial online to guide you if you don't know anything about servers, but it's still way easier than trying to figure out how to use the command line on a regular Linux server. And once that's done, I can just type that domain name into my web browser from anywhere in the world and get access to my NAS. Pretty cool. And then that's where the package manager becomes useful. Here, for example, I will just install the webdav server package, which will let me access the storage on my NAS from anywhere on any network. In one click, it's added to my list of applications. I can just open it, enable HTTPS access, and that's it. And now in my file manager, my webdav storage appears automatically, or I can just type dav colon slash slash, then the domain name I just set up, and boom, I log in with my NAS user and my storage is mounted in my file manager so I can access it from anywhere. And if I want to auto-sync files, I can use Synology Drive, which is basically exactly like Google Drive, but stored privately at home. And they have clients for every operating system, including Linux and smartphones. Next is backups. Yeah, backups are cool, you need them. A good backup strategy is to have a local copy of your files on your computer, then a backup of that at home, and another backup of that outside of your home. Backup solutions are a dime a dozen, and you can just automate that with Synology Drive or any other backup app for any other NAS. Now here, for example, I could backup the content of cloud storage accounts like Google Workspace or Microsoft 365. Although since a NAS can replace all of these cloud storage solutions, that's not something I consider super useful for me personally. But you also have stuff like Active Backup for Business, which lets you well, back up another NAS, multiple PCs, servers, and even virtual machines to your NAS. Other NAS operating systems will also have packages to back up anything you want. Now, there's something that everyone uses cloud storage for, but a NAS does more privately and more securely, and that's photo storage. Here again, let's take a look at the package center, where there's a neat little app called Synology Photos. I can install it in one click again, and then access it from the operating system directly. And there we go, I have an online photo library where I can add photos manually and even have face recognition if I want that's running locally on my NAS, so everything is private. But if you have to manually upload your photos every time there's a new one, then the experience kinda sucks, right? Now fortunately, you can sync photos from your smartphone directly to your NAS. I can install the Synology Photos app on my phone and auto-upload anything from there, photos and videos, and also view all of them with the albums I configured, the face recognition if I have that enabled, and more. So basically, it's Google or iCloud Photos, but stored at home, privately and securely, and you can still access it from anywhere. And we're just getting started, because a NAS can also be used as your own home media server, where you can store every single DVD or Blu-ray that you absolutely legally own and absolutely legally ripped, and you can then stream all of this to your TV or any other computer. Here, for example, I can install Plex in one click from the package center. I could also install Jellyfin using the Docker app and its Docker image. Once it's installed, I can just configure it like any other Plex server by logging into my account or creating one, then creating a media library using folders I created in the Files app of my NAS to keep things orderly. And that's it. Now I can run the Plex app from my smart TV or computer, connect to the server, and access all that media easily and stream it like it was a streaming service that I own. Plex can also handle music if you have a local music collection, but if you're more of an iTunes person, there's an iTunes server app you can install on Synology's NAS to be accessible by a large variety of music players, including on Linux. So yeah, your NAS can also be your full-on media server for music, for videos, for TV shows, and it's stored at home securely and privately. But it can also do a lot more things, like productivity and office work with contacts, calendars, notes, and even office suites. Here, for example, I can install NoteStation for notes, or Synology contacts and calendars to have my own online solution to store all of that and they have Synology Office, which is an Office suite integrated with your file storage that lets you create and edit text files, spreadsheets, or presentations straight from your NAS. It supports collaborative editing, and it's compatible with Microsoft Office formats, and it looks just like Google Docs, so it should be familiar. On other NAS operating systems, you could also install stuff like Collabora or OnlyOffice, if you prefer. 
Basically, your NAS can become a full replacement for Google Workspace or Microsoft 365 with all the same features and all the same applications, but running at home securely and you control everything that's going on. Or if you prefer a fully open source solution, you could also use your NAS to install Nextcloud through a Docker image, for example, and you'll get your own Nextcloud server fully ready with tons of storage accessible from anywhere. And that only covers the basics. Your NAS can also be used to host your own website or even multiple websites on the same NAS. It can run an antivirus for you if you plan to let Windows users access your file storage or if you plan to send them files from it that you might have gotten off the internet. You can even set up your own DNS server if you want. You can run a chat server, a VPN, basically anything a regular server can do, you'll find a one-click installable package for it on your NAS operating system. That's the real draw of a NAS. It's basically exactly like a home server, but way easier to use and configure. It's not completely foolproof, and for some applications you will need a tutorial online, but it's still way easier than using the command line on, for example, Ubuntu server. Of course, we have to talk about the price, because you're buying a computer and some drives, so obviously you will pay more in one go than with just a monthly cloud storage payment. But if you start adding things up, then it really, really makes sense. You can get a basic NAS for around $150, and a 2TB drive for around another 50 bucks, which means that you get for $200 2TB of storage. And that's less than two years of Google Cloud storage for the same amount of data, 2TB. Which means that if you plan to store your stuff for two years or more, then a NAS makes more financial sense than using cloud storage. And if you ever need more storage, you can just slot in another drive, no monthly payment required. And that's not counting the privacy advantages. Whether you use a Synology NAS or any other system, you're storing stuff at home without any data being sent to anyone and you have full control over the hardware. So if you don't want to use the cloud and setting up your own home server from scratch is something that you're not interested in, then what you need is a NAS. It's more private, it's stored at home and it is more money upfront, but in the long run, it's actually going to save you money compared to cloud storage. So yeah, I'd say it's absolutely worth it. Worth it? Like today's sponsor! If you need a new device to run Linux on, stop looking at Windows computers and praying and crossing your fingers for everything to run. Just buy something from Tuxedo, today's sponsor. They have a nice big range of devices that should cover every need and every price point. And every single one of them is configurable to your liking with CPU options, GPU options, RAM, storage, and you can even have your own custom keyboard layout engraved on the keys of your laptop or your own logo laser etched on the lid of your laptop. All their laptops are upgradable, repairable. You can change the battery, the RAM, the SSD. They're just a very, very good choice. So if you need a new device, stop buying Windows computers. Click the link in the description below and get yourself something from Tuxedo. They are really good. So thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like the video, well, you can always dislike it and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you want to support the channel and you want me to make more of these videos, there are plenty of links in the description below for super thanks, PayPal, Patreon or YouTube memberships. Both of these get you access to really nice benefits every week. So yeah, check them out if you're interested. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.